Have you ever sat down at the PC, opened up Steam and thought to yourself, tonight I fancy playing something that will haunt me for years and age me terribly. Great, that's where we come in, because while PC gaming is jam-packed with horror games that will scar you for life, only a select few are worth your time and money. Oh, and if your trembling hands can manage it, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Just because it doesn't have a jump scare around every corner, that doesn't mean Inside won't leave you feeling equal parts terrified and helpless. You play as a defenseless child fleeing certain death at the hands of armed guards and attack dogs. And we mean certain death. One small mistake and you'll have to watch as a burly man strangles a small boy. Or a dog mutilates him. Or he's torn to shreds by a machine gun. Inside is anything but the heartwarming indie title its art style suggests. It plunges you into a bleak and unforgiving world, placing the life of an innocent child in your hands, and forcing you to watch as it gets brutally snuffed out over and over and over again. We know what you're thinking. How can a game with happy in the title possibly be in this list? Well. In We Happy Few, happiness is the result of a hallucinogenic drug called Joy, which keeps the residents of Wellington Wells happy and carefree. It also makes them extremely hostile to anyone who chooses not to take Joy. And by hostile, we mean that the entire town will mercilessly hunt you down and club you to death if they notice you acting even a tiny bit differently. So just take the pill, stay deliriously happy, and it's all good, right? Nope. Instead, you'll be playing as a downer, someone who's off their medicine. So not only will you see Wellington Wells for how depraved it really is, you'll have to act like it's actually really lovely or face the wrath of its murderous denizens. In space, no one can hear you scream. Except that's not really a problem for Amanda Ripley, who's trapped on a giant spaceship with only menacing synths and a giant alien for company. If she did scream, the alien would hear it, track her down and impale her on its barbed tail. Probably best keep shtum. Alien Isolation takes the game of hide and seek to new and frankly terrifying places. Think you'll be able to just sit and wait out the storm by hiding in a locker or under a desk, do you? Nope, this alien will check both dragging you out into the open and devouring you should it discover you there. Oh, and don't even think about trying to outrun it. As if homeless serial killers didn't have it tough enough already, Condemned tasks you with hunting them down and brutally murdering them with whatever horrifically blunt weapons you can pry from the environment. But killing the down and out is only a small part of Condemned you'll also be investigating some seriously seedy crime scenes for clues like bloody footprints, documents, fibres and all manner of soiled garments. If combing through derelict buildings at night and fighting hairy men with pipes is your thing, seek out Condemned now, you sordid bugger. Thief Deadly Shadows is generally not very scary. It's a game where you're the one stalking other players and hiding in the shadows. But that all changes when you reach Shalebridge Cradle, an asylum and orphanage rolled into one. You're also tasked with freeing the soul of a young girl from the building itself, which is much scarier than stealing a pretty vase. Like all the best horror levels in gaming, Shalebridge Cradle can't actually hurt you at all. After all, it's just a building. But even that piece of knowledge won't stop the onslaught of visual tricks and harrowing sounds from reducing you to a mess of nerves by the end of the level. Screeching monkeys that can lob fireballs at you. That's the type of horror you can expect from System Shock 2, a game that plonks you aboard a spaceship with an evil AI and hordes of mutated ghouls to contend with. It might not be the prettiest game by today's standards, but its seemingly endless maze of tight corridors are as terrifying to creep through now as they were back in 1999. It's also riddled with horror tropes like words scrawled in blood and possessed crew members, which are easily the least terrifying things you'll find during your time on the Von Braun starship. Amnesia is a scary enough concept on its own. It didn't need monsters to make it worse. But nope, there they are. Monsters. The kind of monsters you get in actual nightmares and that can only be evaded by just curling up into a little ball, shutting your eyes and hoping they just 
leave you alone. Hiding isn't the only thing you'll be doing in Amnesia either, though just to be clear, there is lots of hiding. You'll also have to actively avoid harrowing sights in order to keep your sanity. Think your way through physics puzzles, and did we mention all the hiding from monsters? Yeah, plenty of that too. Here's something that's scary. Abandoned psychiatric hospitals. They're full of evil doctors, misshapen patients, and ethics codes in dire need of updating. Here's another thing that's scary. A grainy, found footage style camera view. Outlast has both of these, which basically means it's the scariest thing since... Well, pretty much anything else in this video, come to think of it. Outlast has you playing as a reporter with no combat skills whatsoever. There are no guns or machetes lying around Mount Massive Asylum. Instead, you're armed with a camcorder and an uncanny ability to vault over desks, neither of which will save you from the asylum's rampaging patients. Good luck with that. There's something innately terrifying about being stuck at the bottom of the ocean. What's more terrifying is being stuck there with some genetically mutated psychopaths and some hefty blokes with drills for arms called Big Daddies. The city reeks of tragedy, and every one of its rabid inhabitants wants to pull you into its maelstrom of murder and mayhem. There are little girls running around with foot-long syringes, madmen rambling and muttering as they feverishly search for the next kill. Nope, the submerged city of Rapture is not a nice place to get stranded. The Resident Evil franchise has never been as good as it was in 2005, when it still had the slow pacing of the early games, but was just discovering how much fun 3D interactive environments could be. You play as Leon Kennedy, a man tasked with saving the president's daughter from a village full of cultists. A mission he was given despite having some kind of horrible spinal injury that means he turns around slower than an 18-wheeler. Turns out severely reduced mobility is great for cranking up tension. Once you've been chased around rural Spain by a man with burlap for a face and a real thing for power tools, you're a different person. Different in that you're a lot more scared. Right, we've done spooky space stations haunted by an evil supercomputer. We've also done spooky space stations haunted by a marauding alien. Dead Space is different in that it gets its stranded in space scares from a collective of demons who have seemingly wandered off the set of Event Horizon. The USG Ishimura is full of demonic creatures waiting to impale, strangle, claw at and feast on you. Some of them look like gigantic spiders with swords for arms, others look like giant human scorpions. All look like they've been turned inside out and given an extra set of teeth. Oh, and the only way to kill them is by dismembering them, forcing you to get even better acquainted with their disgusting anatomy. Doom 3 is so scary that we now refuse to walk across any metal gangways ever again, especially not while wearing our Space Marine boots. While Doom 3 did have a lot of running around on steel platforms, it's actually the horrifying memories of upside down faced spiders and floating heads that we're trying to keep at bay. Its levels are claustrophobic, flooded with shadows and linear, a mixture that results in jump scare after heart stopping jump scare as the game's various nasties reveal themselves to you. And that's it. All over now. You can come out from under the sheets. All the monsters have gone. We're off now to turn the lights back on and double check all the doors are locked. If you liked our picks, or if you didn't, don't forget to let us know in the comments below.